Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa unveiled his slimmed down cabinet on Wednesday night. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the implications for the economic cluster, including mining and energy. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The reduction in the size of cabinet has implications for key economic ministries. Yes, it's a case of back to the future here. Uh, obviously no change to the key treasury or finance ministry portfolio. So we have Tito Mbaweni there, but there is a change to his deputy in the form of David Masondo. And uh, what we've seen with the other uh, key economic ministry, which is trade and industry and economic development, they've been reconsolidated. So in the past, in the old days, we always only had a trade and industry ministry um, a department which incorporated all the functions that were split out under the Zuma uh, president, Jacob Zuma presidency into economic development and we had two ministers in the form of uh, Ibram Patel at economic development and Rob Davies at trade and industry. In fact we had a third in the form of Lindiwe Zulu at small business which was also at, uh, un uh, bundled from the Department of Trade and Industry and that's now been consolidated, well two of them, into the Department of Trade and Industry. And then the other I suppose change in the sort of economic sphere uh, would be the reconsolidation again a back to the future of minerals and energy um, which I think uh, it was both were anticipated and both helped with the reduction in the size of cabinet uh, to th from 36 to 28 um, but both have raised questions um, well especially the the consolidation of minerals and energy as to whether that is actually the best route to take. What is your reaction to the combination of mineral resources and energy in the context of power shortages and an ongoing energy transition? Yes, I think on the one side, the mining industry, I think, is probably quite content uh, after the appointment of Gwede Mantash or the confirmation of Gwede Mantash as Minister of Mineral Resources and now the combination of those two departments and uh, mineral resources and energy. Um, I think because over the last uh, period the industry has got to know him quite well, he knows the industry well, he comes out of the National Union of Mine Workers, he is a powerful figure within the African National Congress and they have processes in place I think to try and deal with a number of the impediments to investment in the mining space. Obviously we still have outstanding issues around mining Charter 3 but I think uh, it's a better the devil you know sort of situation and uh, they are happy that processes, even if some of them are maybe um, in, the, in the court process, but there's also an engagement happening uh, to sort out these impediments and to try and reinvigorate investment in the mining space. So on that side, I think there's some happiness. On the energy side, far less so, I think, uh, mostly because there was a, a period, there's been a period of massive instability uh, uh, from the energy ministry side. Um, we've had a number of uh, energy ministers over the last five years and every time uh, there's a sort of almost going back to the drawing board approach and uh, there had just been a settling down somewhat under Minister Jeff Kadebe um, in getting processes going again such as procurement of renewable energy, trying to finalise the long delayed update to the integrated resource plan which is sort of right at the end of that um, that long-winded process it's now before NEDLAC to try to get that approved and also sort of a sense in the ministry that there's a transition happening um, within the energy sector away from our old reliance on coal uh, and a centralized system built on coal and nuclear to one that's going to be more um, you know the, the focus is going to shift towards renewable energy as the main workhorses of the system and a much more decentralized focus, uh, centralized structure. So I think th there was a sense that, that m the minister grasped that. Now the only thing that the energy sector knows about uh, the new minister, Gwede Mantash, is that one is a very much a mining guy, uh, they know he's powerful and that he's also very pro-coal and he's made some very pro-coal statements. So that has raised a lot of eyebrows I think in the energy sector. I suppose it's early days and there's also a deputy minister, a new young de deputy minister that comes out of the energy sector but again it's a, a fossil fuel sort of background for the deputy. So 
there's going to have to be an, some engagement around that, uh, that new, uh, those new people, as well as an education process about the transition that is underway in, it, uh, in energy. And it's going to have to see how responsive the two, the, dep the minister and the deputy minister are to that transition. So it's a little bit of uh, one step forward and two step backwards, steps backwards for the, the energy sector, I think. That's the sort of impression, but it may not turn out that way. I think there's, you, know, you never know how these things turn out, and we'll have to see uh, with with uh, the new minister how he's going to approach the changes that are taking place in the sector. I think the president also gave an indication that this is a work in progress in terms of the review of the cabinet structure and the portfolios, and I think in this case this was a, a convenient re-merger of two departments that were once merged but it's not really a logical um, sort of a merger in terms of where uh, the, the world is going in terms of energy and minerals, especially in terms of energy. I think the more logical sequence uh, or structure would have been to have taken energy and put it more with the environmental and water portfolios. Now we have seen a restructuring there too under Barbara Creasy, but that would have been the more logical consolidation this one, I think, is un unfortunately it's a it's a it's an accident of history. These two were once one, and we've made them one again in order to consolidate the size of cabinet. But it doesn't make real sense. Business seems happy with their new cabinet, even though some of the former heavyweights have been excluded. Yes, I think uh, the markets reacted fairly favourable favourably and immediately to the announcement. I think to the trimming down to also the names like Tito and Boweni being there. I think crucially the Praveen Gordon appointment, um, the markets wanted to see that. I know, we, you know this came against the backdrop of, a, of an ill-timed uh, sort of report by the public protector, that, uh, which has basically put pressure on the president not to appoint Praveen Gordon. But I think in terms of the cleanup uh, of state-owned enterprises, um, the Minister Gordon is a key personality and business wanted to see that he retained that portfolio so that he can see through the cleanup. And there's also this massive restructuring that's going to have to take place at Eskom. It will be the biggest corporate restructuring and debt relief probably package we've ever seen in South Africa's history. We've just lost the CEO of Eskom. So I think um, having Praveen Gordon having an insight into the depth of the crisis and uh, having um, sort of continuity there was key for business. There will be some, as I've mentioned, um, uh, concern around, uh, say, for instance, uh, Jeff Kadebe, he's been a very long-serving cabinet minister all the way back to the Nelson Mandela cabinet of 1994 and continually throughout all the cabinets in the sense that he did seem to have his head around some of the changes that needed to take place in the energy space, and they were starting to happen and now it's uh, back to square one. And also what a powerful person like that is going to, where that person's going to land um, with quite a lot of uh, credibility and capability. You know, it may be an issue of um, him being key in the ANC itself. Or we, we, there are a number of placeholders for these credible leaders, I think, that have opened up. You know, that just about um, every state-owned company is, act, uh, is working with acting boards acting executives and there's still other than Eskom there's, there's going to need to be uh, appointments and uh, beefing up either of boards or of executive teams and you might see some of these people um, that have been left out uh, playing a role in some of these, uh, these, these state entities. These range from Prasa and Transnet to Nexa where there's a lot of flux underway and uh, I think we might see some of these people, some of the names like um, Derek Hanukom, who's also been left out, you know, re-emerging in different uh, places, either within the ANC itself to try steady things there and to deal with the factionalism, or within some of these key um, agencies of government where there's, there are uh, some very serious problems still. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.